My name is Walid Mukarzil. My name's Luar Zain. No such thing as a typical week. I think my dream job if I wasn't working for P&G would be... Welcome to Meet the Leaders. I'm Katie Mills and I'm getting to know a little better some of the senior members of our team at P&G Northern Europe. So let's welcome my guest today. I'm Tom Moody. I look after Procter & Gamble's business in Northern Europe. Uh, I'm a six foot three male with blue eyes, allegedly, and um, I'm wearing a blue suit with a white shirt. What brought you to P&G? Uh, I joined P&G by accident. The only reason I joined P&G is I was um, doing that graduate milk round thing and my flatmates were going to the P&G presentation, which involved free food and free alcohol, which ticked at least two of the boxes in my life as a final year student. Anyway, I applied, joined, and uh, I've stayed here. I've been here for over 25 years, and I stay because I like it. Lots of people do work that they don't particularly enjoy. Uh, I'm privileged to do something that I do enjoy, and I get out of bed like Tigger in the morning and love my job. What keeps you here? The thing that keeps me here is pure enjoyment. There are lots of different things I could do with my life. Um, I think it's a real privilege to enjoy what you do. Um, so especially when you're spending a lot of your waking hours doing work, working around smart people with interesting business challenges, I really enjoy it. What's the best thing about P&G that you would tell someone considering joining the company? I think the best advice you can give to people who are you know, leaving school or leaving university is to go somewhere where you're going to learn the most. You're going to work for quite a long time in your life. You may not want to think about that too much right now, but you are. And if you think about it, probably the most important thing is go somewhere where you're going to learn and keep learning. And we think we provide that environment for a few reasons. The first one is we're fans of giving people a real job on day one. We don't give people projects. We give them real jobs from day one. We also try and develop them incredibly strongly, both through formal training, but a lot of informal training that they'll get from their managers and their mentors. And that's how we think we keep people learning very quickly. I'm sure you'd agree there's not really a typical day at P&G. So can you tell me what you've been up to this week? Yeah, there is no typical day, definitely not. I tend to bounce between lots of different issues and I'll try and split my day into kind of 30 minute chunks where I'll look at a problem, then the next problem, then the next problem and so on. Most of the time I'm not actually solving the problem. I'm working with a team to help them see what the options might be, to help them select from all, all the options in front of them. That might be when I'm in the office and then outside of the office, I'll see lots of, I don't know, advertising agencies, retailers, governments, all sorts of different things. So I bounce. We're privileged in the organisation that I look after to have an incredibly diverse organisation. And it's diverse in many ways. So, for example, gender balance, if you look at the, the, the leadership team, you'll find it's 50-50, male-female. We're also working on many other aspects of diversity. One of the ones that we're really trying to make progress right now is on social diversity, where we are conscious that we've got many opportunities where we can do better. So my job is to get a diverse organisation in place, but it's also my job to really use that. Otherwise, it's like having a powerful car, but only driving it in second gear. You have to find your ways of using the diversity of your, your organisation and making sure everyone can, can contribute fully. And there are loads of techniques that we use to do that. One of them is just thinking about how you run a meeting and how you make sure everyone contributes and has an opportunity to contribute, even if they are more or less comfortable speaking up in that environment. So we really, really try and think about diversity and we really try and think about inclusion and, and both are equally important. What do you do when you're not in the office? <laughs> when I'm not in the office, I also keep bouncing quite a lot. I do lots of different sports. Uh, that can be watching my kids playing sport or me playing sports. I seem to collect new ones continuously. I was thinking about this. Uh, in my 30s, I was so bad at this kind of sandcastle thing that I learned to surf. In my 40s, I took that to windsurfing because I figured by windsurfing, I'd be doing a little bit less swimming. Anyway, it turns out I do just as much swimming when I'm windsurfing as I do when I'm surfing. And then I do a load of other ones as well, but um, I enjoy being active. Learning from failure is key to future success. Could you share an example from your career with us? We fail at things all of the time. I have um, a great quote from our previous CEO who always used to say, the only failure is an absence of learning. And the point of the quote is, it doesn't matter if you fail as long as you learn from what you did wrong. A great one that we failed on was actually during COVID where we were studying consumer behaviours and we noticed that they had all sorts of new habits that previously they hadn't had. You might have had it yourself where, for example, you were cleaning parcels that arrived at your house or you were cleaning doorknobs, new habits that emerged. We launched a product against those habits, which tested brilliantly, but actually when we launched it, it was a complete flop. 
Uh, and so we decided after about 12 weeks, we were never going to be able to make it work. And we took it back out of the market again. And that happens. And you just have to be comfortable and relaxed about it. It happens. You learn and you get out of it and move on to the next thing. Having a growth mindset is critical. How would you define it? And what do you do to keep yourself in this mindset? There are lots of ways of thinking about growth mindset. The, the, the single word which best describes it is probably yet. So somebody says, you can't launch into this market, market and make money. Well, it hasn't been done yet. And so you have to have that mindset of you can overcome it. You can find a way. It's about setting difficult goals and going after them. And it's about having an attitude of learn, learn, learn. You can learn so much from the people around you if you keep your eyes and your ears open. If you think about where you learn from, it can come from all around you. It can come from the most junior person in the organization who's just started, who looks at a particular problem and comes up with an idea that I've never thought about. But I'll only learn if I'm open to that learning all the time. So I really try and engage in every conversation like a sponge, thinking I can learn something from other people in every meeting that I go into. If you weren't working for P&G, what would be your dream job? I think my dream job, if I wasn't working for P&G, would be I quite fancy running a ski station. There are a few things that I would institutionalise there. The first one would be total lack of queues. There would be no queues at all. There would also be no moguls. I consider moguls to be an evil thing on a ski slope. And finally, perhaps most controversially, no self-service restaurants. I think when you're skiing, it's great to have the food arrive at the table. You've done enough exercise without going to fetch it. Is there one thing about the company you would like to change? Nothing I'd particularly like to change. I think there are a few businesses that I would like to be in, categories that we're not in at the moment that I'd perhaps like to be in, but um, that can happen over time. So there's nothing massive I'd, I'd, I'd seek to change. Where do you turn to for your inspiration? Any top tips on websites, books or podcasts? The way I try and keep myself current, I guess there would be two things I'd point to. The first one would be I read a lot particularly the financial press. I try and read three newspapers every day. But then also most of my learning actually comes from my own organisation and from stuff that I see. So in every interaction that I go into, I can learn something from the people that I'm working with, whether they've got huge amounts of experience or not very much experience. They'll come at problems differently to me and that gives you learning every time. What would you like your professional legacy to be? The legacy that people will always be the most proud of is not usually on the business side, it's usually on the people side. So I'm very proud of the fact that I've developed the people that I work with and that I think there are several of them who could do the job that I do today. So the most important legacy is always your development of your organisation. What's the most important thing you've learned over your career? The most important thing I've learned is to be a sponge. There are two types of people. There are sponges and rocks. Rocks, you chuck stuff at them and it just bounces off them. Sponges, you chuck stuff at them and they just absorb it. And the more you can be a sponge, the better your career is going to be. The people who do well in life, it's not driven by IQ necessarily. It's much more driven by their openness to learning, in my opinion. Sponges. So what does force for growth and force for good mean to you? And how do you bring this mission to life in your everyday work? As you go along in business, you've got opportunities to help society in small but useful ways. I'll give you an example. Not very far from where I am today, there's um, a hospital where if you had a premature baby, you would end up in that particular hospital. And one in 13 babies in the UK are born prematurely. Now, if a baby's born at an early stage, they end up in an incubator and they end up in an incubator for 23 hours per day. And if they're in an incubator, it's really important that the nappy they're using doesn't leak because it can actually be dangerous having to change all of the bedding around a, a small baby. You want them to be in the incubator and left to, to grow. We supply nappies for newborn babies. Now, that's not a business. Thank goodness it's not a business. There aren't enough of them in it for long enough for it to be a business. But we have expertise in the area, so we make them and we supply them free of charge to hospitals across the UK uh, who have these neo neonatal units. And I think that's a good example of just quietly doing some good in society as you go along. Now, I don't know if those babies are then going to stay in Pampas or not. I really, I, I don't mind. Our, our, our opportunity is to be, do something small but useful to help those babies. P&G have been around for over 185 years. What do you think is the secret of the company's longevity? P&G has been around for a considerable period of time, 185 years. And sometimes people make the mistake of assuming that that means that they'll be around for another 185 years. Uh, we don't have a right to win or a right to keep winning. Uh, we earn it every day and we earn it by brilliantly understanding consumers and making products which massively deliver on their needs. And so uh, I think the most important thing to remain is, is, is humble and to just keep 
reinventing yourself constantly to keep delivering on what people want. And if you do that, you can be around for a long time and, and keep growing businesses. But nobody has a right to keep winning. You, you earn it every day. Thank you for watching this episode. To watch the full series, go to pg.co.uk or to find out more about careers at PG, visit pgcareers.com.